D.A. King is back with us, and it's been a while uh, since we talked to him, but it's always good uh, finding out what's going on in Georgia when it comes to illegal immigration, amnesty, and enforcing our laws. He writes for Breitbart.com as well. D.A., thank you so much for stopping by South Georgia once again. Always my pleasure, Bill. Thank you very much for having me. Happy New Year. Well, I was reading an article in uh, Breitbart.com about uh, Governor Nathan Deal with his uh, controversial appointment for the State Board of Corrections. Uh, Tell me a little bit about what this uh, has caused, um, this appointment, who this appointment is, what it's all about. Uh, Bill, what immediately leaps to mind is this is a real head scratcher. I'm, I'm pretty involved in politics, and I'm I'm considered furniture in the Georgia Capitol when they're in session. I've uh, I've been studying and, and, and been active on il- illegal immigration for a decade now, and I know all the players. And the governor, for reasons we uh, can't yet understand, has appointed a woman named Rocio Del Malagro Woody to the Board of Corrections. Now, Ms. Woody is a Board of Directors member of an organization called the Georgia Association of Latino Elected Officials, or the acronym being GALEO. GALEO is an organization that is in part funded by Jane Fonda and marches in the streets of Atlanta demanding an end to enforcement of our immigration laws. Their leader is a a dedicated far leftist and a former fundraiser for the Democrat Party and Democrat candidates. He has made it clear that it would be an insult to his culture if we made English the official language of the United States of America. His name is Jerry Gonzalez. He is a far leftist. Everybody associated with his group is a far leftist, with the exception of the one token Republican on the board of directors who is now suing the board of regents to try to obtain a in-state tuition rate for people who are in the country illegally. It, it, it is a complete mess, and these people are very well known around Atlanta in political circles. Is he hoping that somehow this is going to benefit him politically coming up in 2014? His um, approval ratings are, are fairly decent for, I guess, for an incumbent. Last time I checked, maybe that's changed since the last time I checked. Um, what is his thinking behind this? I, 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 all I can do is repeat my, my first line. No one can figure this out. And, and to answer your question, no, sir, it, it, it cannot. These are not people who are going to vote for small government, um, low-tax, conservative candidates, no matter if you put one of them on the Board of Corrections or not. There is no political advantage to this that I can see or, and, and many other people that I've checked with. Um, I, it, it, it's a complete mystery. And we, we see a... a a photograph in the governor's office of, of I think it's seven or eight people standing in a row next to the governor, and in one of them is this Jerry Gonzalez character, who is the executive director of this Galeo group. Now, Jerry is a committed far leftist. He is a, a former agent for an organization called the Mexican American Legal Defense and Educational Fund, whose founder, a man who is now gone, named Mario Obledo once made it clear on the radio in the mid-90s in California that California is going to become a Hispanic state. Anyone who doesn't like it ought to leave. They ought to go back to Europe. <laughs> Direct oh, wow. quote from, the, from these people. And because I study and am active on illegal immigration, I, I need to take a moment, if I may, to make it clear that my adopted sister is an immigrant. We don't have anything against immigration. Um, Many of my friends are immigrants. We are totally against the crime of illegal immigration, and we are very pro-English language here in the U.S. and in Georgia. So the the motivation here is nothing other than than trying to stop illegal immigration. But as a side issue, um, I am a conservative. I am a committed, independent voter conservative, and we have a Republican governor who has appointed one of these far leftists, again, on an organization funded by Jane Fonda, to the Board of Correction. It's, it's a head scratcher. Uh, Mrs. Woody, she has made some public statements on illegal immigration, in particular um, Arizona's uh, recent laws. Tell me a little bit about some of what she has said. Uh, it's the usual line. For people who, who, who 
keep their nose in this like I have for, for more than 10 years. It's, the standard line is that if we actually enforce our immigration laws and try to protect jobs, benefits, and services from people who are here illegally in an effort to provide those jobs to legal residents, including real legal immigrants, um, the, the, the talking point from them is that if we enforce our immigration laws, then it's anti-business. And the, the other one is the constant and endless attempt to confuse people with the, the, the redefinition of terms. For example, in the United States, the, the word immigrant has a legal meaning. The federal government defines immigrant as someone who comes to the United States lawfully with the intention of permanent residence. Again, like my adopted sister. If someone comes here illegally or comes here legally and overstays their visa, they are not an immigrant. They are an illegal alien. How powerful and influential is this appointment uh, um, when it comes to the Board of Corrections? With uh, make What kind of decisions would Mrs. Woody be able to make that would affect a lot of people? It is an official appointment. This is an official position. There is authority involved, and it sets a precedent. And so far as I can see, that is, and I know the governor, and I've always liked the governor, and I, and I was, was very honored to be in his office just about six weeks ago for a meeting. Um, it sets a precedent where we have a, a conservative Republican governor appointing a far leftist to an official position on the Board of Corrections. I would urge people to at least call or write the governor's office and perhaps ask them for an explanation. I haven't gotten one. Is there an organized effort right now to try to stop this appointment or undo this appointment? Um, how much headway is this making? I was noticing reading your article in uh, Breitbart.com, Georgia media is nowhere to be found on this at all. Uh, Jim Galloway, who is the political insider for the AJC, and I regard the AJC as a, a left-leaning propaganda tool, but that's just my opinion. Jim Galloway did mention my Breitbart write-up in his political insider column. Other than that, I cannot find and have not heard one single mention from any media member here in Georgia about this appointment until I brought it up, and then only once in the political insider. And then that includes the Associated Press and any news service here in Georgia or any local newspaper. It, it's kind of like it never happened until I, 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 I found out about it. Now, what I have done is found in the Constitution that the Senate has to have final approval on all appointments to the State Corrections Board. Now, that strikes me as odd, and I've asked several elected officials about this. We have an opportunity here to learn about our Constitution and, and, and maybe stop this, but this woman was appointed in August and sworn in to the Board of Corrections in September. But the Constitution says she has to be finally approved by the Georgia State Senate. Now, I am told that normally happens at the end of the session. The 2014 session for the Georgia Senate does not start until January, and then it normally runs until the first or second week of April, 40 session days. So my point is, right now we have a woman who's been appointed and sworn in, but not approved by the Senate, as is um, demanded by the Constitution in the state. So if the Senate does not approve her, the appointment will, will, will go away. Um, I am now in contact with every Republican state senator, making them aware of this, and I've just asked a simple question. How does a far-left appointee to the Board of Corrections get approved by a Republican-controlled Senate in an even-numbered year? Absolutely. It is, it's quite shocking. There's many people speaking out about it, including Kay Godwin, who is in our listening area from Blackshear. Many people uh, know who she is, and, and you have mentioned uh, her in your column. It looks like there's a lot of people uh, raising their voice, and hopefully that message uh, will be sent uh, to Georgia and all the representatives uh, that are uh, playing a part in this. Well, you mentioned Kay. Kay Godwin and Pat Tippett are some of the most dear people I know. They are um, not only personal friends, but, but personal heroes. I look up to them, and I, and I love them both. I, 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 I hope people will follow their lead and express their outrage at what we are talking about, Bill. Uh, we all have not just the privilege, but the duty of raising our voice to the people we have elected to send to our government, whether it's to our local city, county, or state government. All politics is local. I hope that people will at least pick up the phone and call their state senator and ask them if they plan on voting to approve the appointment of Rocio del Malagro Woody to the Board of Corrections and make it clear 
per history. You've got this article posted. People can easily read. And all I did was, was include the tip of the iceberg on these folks. These are far left people who are never going to vote conservative, Republican, small government, ever. These are committed leftists. And one of them is now on the Board of Corrections, appointed by a Republican governor. There was a recent article in uh, Breitbart.com, and this is a story that has uh, been around for quite a while, um, s- since the summer, about uh, three dozen illegal immigrants filing a lawsuit uh, demanding a judge tell uh, Georgia State University Board of Regents to give them in-state uh, tuition. Uh, you've actually been a part of this. Uh, tell me a little bit about where this is at and maybe a little bit of uh, background for people who are just uh, hearing this story for the first time. Um, trying to think where to start. Uh, well, there's two levels of, of, of tuition here in, in our public universities. And let's make sure that everybody understands that we're talking about publicly funded universities here in Georgia that are part of the university system of Georgia, not private schools. The private funded colleges have the ability and, and, and the authorization, as they should, to decide what people pay to attend. What's happening is that people who are here, for example, from Michigan or, or New Hampshire, if a student comes in from out of state, they go to a USG or a Georgia public school, have to pay the out-of-state tuition, which can be four times as high as the in-state tuition for somebody who, who is a Georgia native, grew up in, in, and calls Georgia home. Now, what the, the, the deal is here is that people are trying to force the Board of Regents to award in-state tuition to people who are here illegally from another country. What we would end up with were this to happen is that somebody, again, for example, you could have a a 19-year-old kid coming from Michigan paying four times as much in tuition here in Georgia at, for example, the University of Georgia as somebody who is here from Australia if they are here illegally. And if you're going to give somebody who is a foreign national the in-state tuition while you're going to deny it to and an American, I think most people can see the inherent injustice in this. We are trying to stop that. Interestingly enough, there is multiple uh, federal laws and state laws that are designed to prevent this. There is a federal law that says if you do award in-state tuition to foreign nationals who are here illegally, then you must award in-state tuition to everyone in that school system, everyone in the, in the university system of Georgia. Now, whether or not that particular law is going to be cast aside, like most of our immigration laws are anyway, remains to be seen. Can you give us a little bit of insight of what DACA is? I guess that's how you pronounce the acronym, D-A-C-A. Um, and, and how is DACA affecting Georgia and immigration laws? Um, p- people that don't are unfamiliar with that, uh, maybe you could educate them on that a little bit as well. I, I can, and I, I hope I can do it briefly. DACA is an acronym for Obama's amnesty, his administrative amnesty that he instituted last year. It is it stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Now, deferred action for deportation has been in federal law for, for decades, and there's a reason for it. Most of us would not object Let's say there is a family whose mom and dad and the oldest child was here illegally, and they and the, and the mom and dad had more small children who were born here and happened to be United States citizens. If something happened to the mom and dad and the teenage daughter who was not a citizen, who was not here legally, for example, was in charge of taking care of her little brothers and sisters, I, for one, would support at least delaying, if not ending, the possibility of her being deported. We want her here taking care of her brothers and sisters. I would support that, and I think most Georgians would as well. It was intended for things like I just outlined. It was intended, the deferred action was meant to to be a tool to, to, to delay the deportation proceedings of somebody for a good humanitarian or, or other reason. What Obama has done... When the DREAM Act amnesty failed, as it should have in Congress for 11 years, because it was a complete scam, 
what Obama has done at the urging of the far left open borders lobby as he has simply said, I'm going to take this deferred action that is meant to be applied on a case-by-case reviewable basis, and I'm going to apply it to a million illegal aliens who can say that they were brought here as children and they graduated from high school or they are attending high school or, or, or through no fault of their own were brought here illegally. He has... You, unilaterally applied the deferred action feature to an entire entire class of people, not the case-by-case instance that it was meant for. So now we have um, half a million, uh, probably go up to a million at least, people in this country illegally who have been granted this deferred action. It was not meant to be used like that. However much sympathy we may have for somebody who's now 21 years old who was brought here at age three by their parents. This can be dealt with in Congress if it's done the right way. But DACA is simply the Obama amnesty for an entire class of of people who are here illegally. You you know, when when I hear you talk about this DA, uh, what goes through my mind is that, you know, maybe there are some people that um, lean towards the right, but they're they're squishes when it comes to illegal immigration. I mean, just just hearing this, they they could probably all agree that with what Obama is doing, all that's going to do is lead to chaos um, when when you apply that as liberally as he does. Well, it's already leading to chaos. But here is the danger. Obama... Um, less than a year before he did this, this, there's no other word for it, it's an amnesty, because he's saying it's renewable. Not only are we saying that if you're here illegally and you, and you fit this long list of, of requirements, not only are we saying we're going to delay deportation, wink, wink, nod, nod, we're going to continually renew this every two years. Obama just yesterday said, or th- through a member of his administration, that as long as as the president is in power, their words, as long as the president is in power, these people will never be deported. In addition, he has awarded them authority to work in the United States by giving them a green card. A green card is what permanent, lawful permanent residents get when they obey the law. He has made sure that they get a, a social security number and a green card. They are, they are de facto now legal. What the danger is that because we are continually beating amnesty attempts that Obama will take this deferred action and expand it even more to all illegal aliens. He is fully capable of that. However illegal it is, unconstitutional it is, I think we can all recognize that, um, that dear leader Obama, a man for whom I have absolutely no respect, well, I do respect the office, Obama is fully capable of simply saying by decree that we are no longer going to enforce any of our immigration laws. And here you go, folks. Vote Democrat when you get the right, and we're never going to deport you. We're going to apply this DACA program to everybody who is here illegally. Well, tell me a little bit about uh, states approving driver's licenses for illegal immigrants. Where are we at with this in Georgia particularly and other states that are influenced um, with this as well? Thank you, Bill. The, the, the Georgia media has done a superlative job on, on keeping quiet the, the, the fact that Department of Driver Services here in Georgia has been issuing driver's licenses to some illegal aliens since the summer of 2012. Uh, what happened is that for years, the Republicans in the State House fought the Democrats to be sure that we could not issue driver's licenses to illegals, thereby rewarding them and and, and making Georgia even more attractive to illegal immigration, which is caused by illegal employment. All this is hooked up to jobs, jobs, jobs. Well, fast forward to 2012, after the DREAM Act was killed in Congress again for the 10th or 11th year in a row, the current president of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama, simply unilaterally bypassed Congress, said, if you're not going to pass it, I'll do it administratively. And he put out an edict saying that if you are an illegal alien and you can make the state of Georgia, excuse me, the United States believe that you were brought here as a child illegally by your parents, 
um, and you're not more than 31 years old, I think, then we are going to promise to effectively never deport you. But what it comes to is Obama has issued a delay in deportation proceedings for two years. But the two years is renewable. And everyone connected with this recognizes that he will always renew this. And probably current presidents will as well. The, the fact is, according to the Department of Homeland Security and according to the White House blog, that these people who are here illegally have been given a two-year de facto permanent delay in their deportations, but they are still illegal aliens. Additionally, the president has awarded them with authority to work and a social security number, thereby making them eligible for a Georgia driver's license. This could easily be changed in the legislature. It's easy enough to pass a law to get around this so that we do not issue driver's licenses to anybody who is here illegally. My problem is that I cannot get the supermajority controlled Georgia legislature to pay any attention to this. So I'm grateful for this time on your show. I'm hopeful that, that your listeners might give their state senator or their state rep or the speaker or the governor a call and demand that they stop issuing driver's licenses to illegal aliens. I know that was a mouthful, but there's just one more point. People will say, Why? Would we do that? And here's why. Because the Republicans in the House of Representatives in Washington are going to be in a fight starting in a couple of weeks about awarding another amnesty to everybody who's here illegally. Now, assuming the Republicans stand strong against the far left, the Chamber of Commerce, and, and all the business interests, assuming this amnesty is killed again, the president is very likely to repeat this deferred deportation process for all illegal aliens. He is threatening to do so if Congress doesn't pass another amnesty. Boil it down. Georgia has the ability to stop this issuing of driver's licenses to this limited number of illegal aliens, and they should do it because it is very, very possible that the President of the United States simply waves a magic wand and says, if you're here illegally, we're never going to deport you, and thereby making them eligible for a Georgia driver's license, thereby making Georgia a better and more, more, more drastic mecca for illegal immigration. You know, I was reading Attorney General Sam Olin's statement uh, regarding the Obama directive, and you get the sense that he's kind of hiding behind that and saying, well, there's really nothing that I can do uh, about it. That's my sense. Am I reading that incorrectly? Or I, I, I respectfully, I, I don't think so. Bill, because the, 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 the AG's office, no matter who is there, is to, is to read the law and report what's in it. They're, I think their response to reading was a question from the governor's office asking if there's anything in Georgia law that would, that would require Georgia to issue a driver's license to, to, these, to these deferred action people. Um, and, and there is. The, the statement is quite clear. Deferred action qualifies for a Georgia driver's license. I am trying to get these, these Republicans in the House to adjust the law so that it no longer says that. But the AG is merely re reporting what the law says. You know, and you're talking about driver's licenses, you're talking about Social Security numbers. The big question comes up then, and then what is the next step? Are we, where does voting come in, and, and does this open the door for voter fraud? It is. It is certainly does, Bill. Good. Good point. It, it, it's it, all everything connected with illegal immigration is an extremely slippery slope. If you give the people who 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 depend on illegal immigration for their livelihood, for their cheap labor, for their political power, an inch, they will eventually figure out a way to take a mile. And you can already illustrate that, what you just said. Oh, really? You can get a driver's license? Well, what about the motor voter laws? Oh, don't worry. An illegal alien would never take a chance on registering to vote. Well, that's nonsense. We see it happen all across the country. We've seen it happen in, in California. It's happened here in Georgia. And it happens pretty much in every state. But further, there's already a lawsuit saying, well, look, if these people have deferred deportation status, they should qualify for in-state tuition, too. And, and that, that lawsuit is already pending here in Atlanta, and the goal here is to create an atmosphere 
in Georgia, in the university uh, system of Georgia, in which the following could happen very easily. Let's say there's an illegal alien here in Georgia, and he wants to go to the University of Georgia. This lawsuit wins, and, 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 and this illegal alien could get in-state tuition. Well, let's say there is an American kid who wants to go to UGA who lives in Chattanooga. The out-of-state tuition that the Chattanooga kid would have to pay is nearly four times as much as the in-state tuition. We, if we're not very, very careful, we will create an atmosphere in which not only are we rewarding illegal immigration with a license to drive, but also with in-state tuition so that somebody here illegally can attend the university system of Georgia at a lesser rate than an American kid. And, and, and this is the slippery slope, and it, it goes downhill from there. Um, right now we have a law in the books in Georgia that says you can use your college ID to prove who you are when you register to vote. Oh, man. It, wow. it gets, I mean, it just keeps on going. So there, there, there is a, a, a calling in, 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 this, in this very kind appearance on your radio show this morning, and that is I am begging your listeners to pick up the phone and call their state representative and call their state senator and call the Speaker of the House. And that particular phone number I happen to know by heart, and it's 404 656 5020. That's 404 656 5020. That goes to the office of David Ralston, the Republican Speaker of the Georgia House. You can leave a message with his very, very nice staff, very politely, simply saying this We want to stop issuing driver's licenses to anybody that's in this country illegally. You know, the thing that just kind of gets me is that there's, you know, reading some of the information that's out there in these articles, that there's so many Republican-controlled states, uh, states that are traditionally red states or or have a Republican governor in them. Maybe they're purple, a little bit blue, but they still have a Republican governor in them uh, that are pushing uh, in-state tuition uh, for illegals, and you just kind of scratch your head. Why would they do this? Why would they? What does that this have to do with anything um, in regard to the rule of law and enforcing the rule of law? And why would Republican do such a thing? Well, it, it's it's a long story, but the short version is this: It happens that most illegal immigration comes from Latin America. It happens that most people who are here illegally are extremely unskilled, low-wage workers. Now, some genius in the Republican Party has told a lot of Republicans, nationally, Washington, Georgia, that somehow if they are nicer to illegal aliens, then they will get a larger percentage of the Hispanic vote. And that goes up to and including repeating the amnesty of 1986. It is complete hogwash. And to illustrate that, um, Reagan signed the amnesty of 1986. It was supposed to end illegal immigration forever. It was supposed to secure the borders, and it was supposed to ensure that black market labor here illegally did not get hired. Now, the only thing it did was legalize all of the illegal aliens. Well, the next Republican candidate, George H.W. Bush, got very little of the Hispanic vote, just a little less than, 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 than Reagan got the last time. And it's not because people are Hispanic or they're here illegally or they know people that are here illegally. It's the fact that low-wage workers do not vote for small government, low-tax conservative candidates. They vote for the candidate who says they're going to give them the most. And, and what, you, what you just asked me is why are these Republicans nationwide going out of their way to make life easier for people who are here illegally? It's because they have been told by their leadership that this will somehow lead to more political power. It won't. But in many cases, that excuse, or well, that reasoning is an excuse to actually further the Chamber of Commerce agenda that we legalize these people and double our immigration rate. And the reason for that goes right back to the core, core root of, of illegal immigration, and that is artificially cheap labor. 
And then on top of that, you're talking about uh, the artificial cheap labor angle where there are so many people that want to donate and give out donations if you go ahead and vote for this, if you vote for amnesty and you push this. So um, they're, they're doing it uh, because uh, they're going to get a, a whole bunch of campaign money and a whole bunch of kickbacks on top of that, the whole crony capitalism on steroids pretty much. You pretty much got it. You know, the the people want to know. When I, I do a lot of public speaking, <clears throat> excuse me, and and I'll, I'll tell people the following. And here here's a couple of facts. Georgia, for example, has more uh, illegal aliens than does Arizona. We rank number six in the nation. The Pew Hispanic Center says that at least seven percent of our workforce is here illegally. Our unemployment rate had run between 8 and 9% for years. It's now down to 7.4%, but that was from December. It'll go back up. English is an optional language in Georgia. And people say, DA, we've elected Republicans. We have a Republican governor. We have a Republican lieutenant governor, Republican speaker. Two-thirds majority of Republicans in our legislature. The entire state is controlled by Republicans. Why, Why is this happening? And, and the answer is the big money. The Chamber of Commerce, the business community, the, 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 the agriculture industry, the tech people like Mark Zuckerberg, everybody is after saving a buck or two on their labor. That is what's going on here. And, and people are not just losing their rule of law. They're not just, just losing their language. English is an optional language in Georgia. We're losing our country, and we're losing the concept of having borders. If one more amnesty goes through... The, the, the Congress in Washington, nobody in the planet will ever take an American immigration law seriously again. And, and that is the goal. The final goal is to have the free flow of people, open borders, so that employers can get the cheapest possible labor. You know, and now we kind of rethink. We talked about this before, D.A., where Governor Deal's pro-amnesty radical appointment to the Board of Corrections, and you kind of wonder to yourself, well, maybe it was just one of these things that he really wasn't, uh, he just kind of did by mistake, and you didn't think about it. But now you now you think to yourself, well, maybe there's more involved in this. If uh, the Republicans in Georgia are not willing to fight back these pro-amnesty provisions with the whole driver's license debacle, you kind of wonder what Governor Deal's motives were for this pro-amnesty appointment to the Board of Corrections. Well, um, that appointment that you mentioned is, 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 a, is another story, and I appreciate your, your, your putting it out there in our, in our last visit. The fact is that Governor Deal has appointed a radical, far-left, anti-enforcement immigration radical to the Board of Corrections. She's on the board of, 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 of a, uh, she's on the board of directors of, of a very very radical left wing group here in Georgia that's funded by Jane Fonda. Now the catch here is that although the governor has appointed her and currently she is acting in her official capacity on the board of corrections, she still has to be approved by the Georgia Senate, which, as we've established, is controlled by a two thirds majority of Republicans. You will, will, you will know for sure if we have, as the people, lost any control of our state government if the legislature does not stop issuing driver's licenses to illegal aliens and if the Georgia State Senate, controlled by Republicans, confirms the appointment of this radical leftist that the governor has appointed to our Board of Corrections. If these things happen, you can just sit back and watch the Chamber of Commerce take over the Republican government until the Democrats get enough political power to win back the state house, and then you just watch the Chamber of Commerce go pal up with the far left, and, and they'll continue on from there. And everything I just told you is is extremely accurate and and sadly quite true. You know, and when I first heard about this uh, radical appointment, the last time you were on talking about. Uh this uh, pro amnesty appointment to the board of corrections from governor deal i decided to uh you know contact a couple of uh, state legislatures and, and state senators and they don't want to talk about it they don't want an interview with me now maybe it's because they're busy or or they just didn't get back to me or something else but uh so far i haven't been able to talk to anybody about it and i, I i've contacted these folks and they, they're not uh, returning my phone calls is that just kind of situational or do you think um there is um no pushback whatsoever on this no it, it, it's it's 
it's clubhouse politics. It's the it's the Republicans circling their wagons. I go to that Capitol nearly every day when they're in session. I'm going down there later this afternoon and pass out some information. But what you're getting is, oh my goodness, I'm not going on the radio and speaking <laughs> to the governor because it's bad for my political career. That that is the end of that story. There, there, there's something else, Bill, and and I. I I want to get this out as quickly as I can. Not only is Georgia issuing driver's licenses to illegal aliens, and not only am I having a great deal of trouble getting the, the legislature to pay attention and changing that, and quite honestly, I'm having a lot of trouble in getting people to call and contact their, their government. We don't have that right. We have that responsibility to, to, to make these calls and, and tell our legislators what we want to happen. But not only are we issuing driver's licenses to illegal aliens, we're giving the written test in 11 foreign languages. Let that sink in for a minute. You might notice that all of our road signs are in English. You might notice that, that most of our, our, our government functions is conducted in English. But we are giving the driver's license written test in 11 foreign languages in addition to English. Now... What the state of Alabama, for example, Arizona, Hawaii, um, Oklahoma, and even California have done, is they have had their legislature create an avenue by which voters can go to the poll and vote yes or no on a question on making English the official language of government. And that's not just a law. They have allowed voters to vote on whether or not to amend the Constitution, asking the question, shall the Constitution be amended to make English the official language of government in the state? Um, we have enough votes, just Republican votes, in the House and the Senate to create a resolution that will allow you and I and everybody who votes in November to go to the poll and vote on whether or not they want to amend the Constitution to make English the official language and stop, by the way, issuing our driver's license with a written test in 11 foreign languages. Nobody, and I mean nobody in that capital, will, 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 will do anything but listen to me with a stone-cold face and say, DA, I can't do that because we get too much pushback from the business community. Oh, wow. So this initiative, uh, making English the official language in Georgia, I know that you are pushing that. How is that going so far? Where are you at in this process? Are you making any headway? Are you getting some support? Um, absolutely zero headway, but I want to be clear and, and to be <laughs> fair. In 1996, there was a law, a statute passed that makes English the official language of Georgia. That law is completely and totally ignored. Okay. And if you want to illustrate that, go back to what we just talked about. That being that we're issuing driver's licenses and, and, and doing the written test in 11 foreign languages. If English is our official language of government, why in the world would we give a driver's license test and these study materials in a language other than English? We have a law that says English is the official language which is being ignored. Our goal here, and I hope statewide, will be to create a resolution that's passed in the House and passed in the Senate that will allow voters to go to the poll in November and vote on amending our Constitution. Now, if some future legislature or governor or whatever wants to ignore the Constitution and not just a state law, you know, we can fight that battle in the future. I, I, I expect it to happen, but our, our hope is that people will put enough pressure on their legislators with a, with a simple statement, we want to be able to vote in November on amending our Constitution to make English the official language. Why will you not allow us the right to simply vote on it? I can tell you it would pass wildly. In Oklahoma, when they did it in 2010, the bill's sponsor won by 76 points, I think, and the no, it was 76% of the vote went for, yes, we want to amend the Constitution to make English our official language of government, and the, the state senator who sponsored it won by 75%. Um, it, 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 it will never be done unless there's a great amount of pressure because the legislators, the governor, everyone knows this would pass with flying colors. 
not just in the in the in the legislature, but if they give the people of Georgia the opportunity to vote to amend the Constitution to make English our official language, it would probably get seventy to eighty percent of the yes mm. votes. But they're not willing to put that out there because they don't want to offend the people who donate the big money to their campaigns, that being business. Deportations in Georgia, why do they continue to decline? I was hoping you could get a little bit more information about uh, deportations. Yeah, um, this, this, this comedy, this farce that somehow Obama has set deportation records that the Associated Press and every other journalist, and I use that very loosely, continue to, to tell the American people is completely untrue. Um, Bush deported more people than Obama has. Jimmy Carter, um, Bill Clinton deported more people than Obama has. What Obama has done is he has taken the numbers of people who are caught at the border trying to come in illegally and combined those with the people who are deported from the interior. As near as we can tell, only a little bit less than 140,000 people were deported last year from the interior of the United States. A far cry from the 400,000 that the Obama administration is claiming. But the numbers can be confusing. The fact is that deportations are going down. The fact is that a large part of the people who are caught committing crimes in this country who are here illegally uh, get into the deportation system and then are simply quietly released and they go back into their own communities, perhaps to commit more crimes. Here in Atlanta, in Gwinnett County Jail in 2010, when they started a federal system called 287G, which simply screened existing prisoners to see who was in the country illegally, it turned out that about half the jail population in Gwinnett County, Georgia, a very large metropolitan Atlanta county, that nearly half the jail population were illegal aliens. And some of them in there were for for murder charges, kidnapping, child Mm. abuse, drug dealing, uh, rape. Now, this is not good government, and, and this is the fault of the federal government. This is, comes directly from Obama, that the deportations have been scaled back while he gets the liberal media to try to convince people that we're somehow setting a record. It's a mess. It's a mess, folks. It's a mess, Bill, and it's going to get worse. If we don't find some elected officials who have the courage to stand up and do what they said they would do when they ran for office, Um, we're going to fall apart a lot quicker than some people think. There's a couple of things we can do here in Georgia, and that is, again, to call your state legislator, um, call your your rep, your state senator, call the speaker, call the governor's office, and make it clear that you've had enough. We want to stop issuing driver's licenses to illegal aliens, and we want the opportunity to vote in November about amending the Constitution and making English our official language. Um, for people who have never called, the governor's office is staffed by very, very nice people. All you have to do is call and leave a very polite message. My name is so-and-so. I vote every year. I'm watching very carefully. I want you to stop issuing driver's licenses to illegal aliens. It will affect my vote. And you just call and be nice, and the, and the, and the young man or the young woman passes the message on to the governor and his staff. The governor's office number, by the way, is 404 Six five six, seventeen seventy six. You know, and I think one of the things that people do need to realize, sometimes you get into the whole debate of, oh, it's just a, the, the debate is illegal versus non-illegal, and, and people fail to realize that um, there's a lot of uh, crime associated with illegal immigration. The stats are there when it comes to drugs, when it comes to gang crime, when it comes to identity theft problems, some of the stuff that you have just mentioned. So I think that, um, that message cannot be uh, said enough. It needs to be said even more of, of what's associated with illegal immigration and, and the problems that that arises from it. Well, nothing good comes from illegal immigration, and and what's happening in Washington is that the the Republicans are being pressured to do another amnesty. Legalization, by any name, does not stop illegal immigration. We proved that in 1986. What's happening in Georgia is that the the people who ran as conservative Republicans are backsliding like crazy because they know the media won't tell anybody that illegal immigration is running amok here in Georgia. The laws that we passed on the state level to address illegal immigration, to try to save jobs, to try to save benefits, services, and tax dollars are being ignored, and now we're issuing driver's licenses to illegal aliens. It's really, really, it's really real, folks. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm begging people to call. If you call the governor's office or call your state legislator, I'll come wash your car. <laughs> Sounds good. My car needs to be washed pretty bad, too, my friend. <laughs> I think I'll give him a call today. D.A. King, it has been a pleasure talking with you and some very needed information that people don't hear every day. Uh, thank you so much. What can we learn about your website? Um, the, I believe it is the Dustin Inman Society, correct? We, we, we have, a, we have a, a, a modest little nonprofit. We don't get funding from the business community like the far left, open borders people do. We have a website called thedustininmansociety.org. We have a Facebook page, the Dustin Inman Society. I plead with people to take advantage of, 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 the, of the tool that is Twitter. Twitter scares people. I don't know why, but Twitter is an extremely effective way to communicate and, ga- and gain information. I have a Twitter account, um, D-A-K-D-I-S. Um, if anybody's welcome to call me, email me, go on the website, whatever, but can't get too much information on this. I don't expect everybody to be an expert like I am. I've been doing it for nearly 15 years, but my hope is that people will pay attention. And the very basic thing, if you told somebody in Georgia that a Republican government in Georgia was allowing driver's license to go to illegal aliens, they would have jumped on a bus and come to Atlanta with pitchforks and torches. Mm. Now, because it's been kept so quiet, it's happening. Nobody's saying a word inside or outside the Capitol. We want to change that. D.A. King, thank you so much for joining me today.